My heart is shaking. Mary Ben Alicia has been praying for quiet after living for weeks with a mother's greatest fear, the thought of something terrible happening to her four children. The thoughts come with the sounds of rockets that fly overhead here so often. Israel has installed an Iron Dome missile defense system near her neighborhood, a few kilometers from the Gaza border. How many times have you taken cover? All days. All day. All day we have boom in the air. The children is uh, scared. Even with the Iron Dome nearby, she says everyone here knows it doesn't work 100% of the time. And they have seen the consequences of a rocket attack. A neighborhood boy just made it home after three weeks in the hospital when a rocket exploded nearby. After weeks inside, she takes a chance and lets her children out to play. As the first ceasefire of the day was announced, we traveled closer to the border. Troop movements and tanks stir up dust. There was quiet here for a time. There's no noise now. I can't even hear a drone, which is very unusual. We arrive at Kibbutz Nirim. Gaza is just a short walk away. Adele Raymer has lived here since the 1970s. She says this is the worst fighting she has ever seen. I mean, the, the past few weeks, we have artillery and, and uh, cannons on both sides of the kibbutz behind. I don't know where they are, but they make a racket. They're, it's deafening. And yet she stays, taking us on a tour of rocket pox streets, showing us the unexploded rocket close to the playground. And lastly, a look at the spot where her 77-year-old neighbor was severely injured, when a rocket got to him before he got to safety. This kibbutz is so close to the border, the Iron Dome can't work fast enough. Most residents here have left. Adele relies on her shelter. I've been sleeping in here since the end of, since the end of June. Few sleep well on the border now. Both Adele and Mary recognize that is especially true if you are on the Gaza side. Does it disturb you what you're seeing happening in Gaza with all the children and mothers killed there? Of course, of course. I think uh, it's, a, it's a disaster what happened there, and it's a disaster what happened here. A disaster these two mothers fear will happen again and again. The desire for revenge too great for either side to completely overcome. Sarah Seidner, CNN, on the Israel-Gaza border. Charles Ratford, live for us in Rafa. Charles, that was one area that was particularly pummeled hard over the past few days. I mean, what we're seeing behind you looks extraordinary. Show us around there. It's quite incredible, Laura, what we're seeing here. Um, as you rightly say, this was the front line, or very close to the front line, where the Israeli forces were. It's only two kilometers in that direction towards Israel and everywhere you go here scenes of utter devastation. The building behind me was in fact a government building that was hit a few nights ago. Obviously houses around it in the near vicinity terribly damaged as well. We're speaking to people here that are picking up or trying to pick up the pieces of their lives and there's very little of their lives left seemingly. Picking through the rubble of their houses, struggling with anything that they can find. We're seeing young children pulling blankets out, toys from under the rubble. Um, this area was particularly badly hit. Um, there were a number of airstrikes last night here. Two children were confirmed dead. Um, there was also a lot of tank shelling. Um, other people we've spoken to saying, well, where are we going to go? We hear that there are tens of schools available here in Rafa, but they're all full. So one gentleman we spoke to and asked, you know, where is he going to go? Actually, he has a house here behind this building that has been destroyed. He said, well, I've got no choice. I've got to try and pull out as much as I can from the rubble and take my wife and children and try and find shelter, whether that be with a family, possibly outside Rafa, or try and try and negotiate some sort of space in these schools. It was interesting that earlier today, as we drove into Rafa, there was a lot more traffic on the roads. Um, now, this was much earlier on. There was a sense of, if you like, it was a bit calmer. But since we've been here and people have started to come, certainly into this sort of far eastern section of Rafa, you get a sense of greater urgency amongst people. They're in, pulling as much as they can out of the rubble, loading them onto carts and themselves onto carts and, and getting out of the area as quickly as possible.
Absolutely. Okay, Gazans were uh, rather suspicious, as one would expect, that the ceasefire is going to hold. Charles, thanks very much for bringing us the scene there from the south in Rafa. Let's now go to the north. We can join our correspondent, Imtiaz Tayab. He's in Beit Hanun. Uh, Imtiaz, massive destruction there as well as people return back to their homes to try and salvage what's left. Indeed. Uh, since we started speaking earlier this morning, we've seen more and more people coming back here to Betanoon to assess what they have left. But I'm actually in one of the few houses that is still standing. In fact, let me take you inside and, and give you a look of just what we're seeing in this house. This was home to seven people, five children, a husband and a wife. Uh, they don't live here anymore. They fled the fighting. Uh, and uh, let me just show you inside because this is very significant. Um, and you can you can probably see on the ground spent shell casings, uh, you can see uh, some other sort of uh, paraphernalia and really what we understand and what people have been telling us here uh, in this area is that uh, this room was occupied by Israeli ground forces for a pretty significant period of time. To put it bluntly, this was the front line here in Beit Hanun. Uh, Israeli ground forces were here in very large numbers. They had tanks. Uh, and as we've been seeing here, they also occupied this room and used it as a strategic place for where they could fight against uh, the various factions here in the Gaza Strip. And it really just underscores just the lives uh, of the people here in Beit Hanun and indeed all over Gaza is that they've, become, they've come so close to conflict. The conflict has touched nearly everybody life here and it's typified uh, in this small room. Okay, Imtiaz, thanks very much. Very interesting indeed to get a look inside one of the homes there in Beit Hanun.